The views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the host and guests and do not necessarily reflect the policy or position of Owen TV's management, staff, or board of directors. Detroit Basketball! Hello and welcome in to Views from the Sidelines. I'm your host, Joey Tyson, my partner, Malik Hill. And, you know, man, it's been kind of crazy lately in the sports world. There's been a lot of weird stuff, especially in the NFL. Uh, we'll get to those. Um, not much update on the NBA. There is one little controversial thing going on with uh, some hometown rivalries, I guess. I, I don't know what, what the beef is. Um, and then we'll give a college football update. But um, next week, we will be doing our NBA preview show because the Pistons home opener is next week. We will be yes, there. We will be in attendance. If only we were popular enough to do a live show <laughs> from the Little Caesars Arena. That'd be sick. But anyway. Maybe one day. Um, we might have a special guest next week. We'll see. We'll see what happens um, to do that preview show. So that should be pretty cool. Um, but... Malik, how much uh, NBA preseason have you watched? Any? I two nights ago, I realized that I had missed like two days of highlights, so I literally at like randomly at, in the middle of the night just started marathon and NBA highlights on YouTube. Okay, and I honestly don't remember a lot from all of it because I was just it was like past eleven p.m. and I was just like letting videos roll back to back to back. So Trey Young looked good. Mm-hmm. Uh, I like what Jaden Ivey is doing and did in New Orleans. Sadiq Bey is getting in, into more of a rhythm. Uh, I really like Orlando, how they yeah. look so far. Mm-hmm. What they've what they're doing with Franz and Paolo so far. Like I, I watched some of their game live last night when they played the Grizzlies. Like they they just have like one of them bring the ball up like every other possession mm-hmm. to get the play started, and like Cole Anthony or Jalen Suggs will like just get into the offense after they bring it. It's really interesting watching what they do. Hmm. And they're playing bowl bowl. So which like is very see. interesting. Yeah, him him and Mo, Mo Bamba are getting minutes. My guys. It's uh yeah, I'm I'm gonna enjoy watching them. Yeah, I think they'll lot. be fun. Um and we will get to see them next week. Yeah. Playing the Pistons. So two like pretty like I think exciting young teams. Uh so that should be pretty cool. Yeah. And also huge shout out to Jamal Kane. Pontiac Michigan's own Oakland University signed by the Miami Heat Pretty after cool. playing lights out in the preseason so far. Mm-hmm. He's been playing great on defense, catching lobs, hitting shots. Honestly, he's like a younger version of like what P.J. Tucker brings for them. But he's more athletic mm-hmm. and like quicker. Yeah. He gives them everything P.J. gave them. So hopefully they play him yeah. in the regular season. We've had a good string of uh, OU guys getting a chance. Which is yeah. always kind of cool. Can't be with the talent. He just needs to produce results. But yes. that's for the college basketball preview. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> don't, we, we don't want you to get upset. Like, um, the big thing, though, in the NBA that we're going to talk about today, Draymond Green straight up punched Jordan Poole in a yeah. practice. Because apparently they were talking to each other. Apparently things were said. I don't know exactly what was said. But uh, somehow... Some and this is the wildest part. TMZ got a hold of this video. Somebody, Somebody snitched. Yeah, and I don't know oh, who, how much. How much do you think TMZ uh, offered them? Are they just really that slimy to I, where it was just like, eh? I'll give it away. It could be. I don't know. It's California. It's pretty. <laughs> who knows? It's it's crazy. Um, for that to even get out. Um, but it happened, and it was pretty brutal. And he could have he could have hurt Jordan Poole. Oh yeah. And I don't know where I land in this because, like, some people are like, well, Jordan Poole was saying stuff to him. And then he, like, (laughs) and then Draymond got up in Jordan Poole's face. And then when he got up close, Poole pushed him away. And then Draymond kind of sat there, thought about it for a minute. And then he's like, nah, I'm taking this guy out. And he just Superman punched him and knocked him out. Um, 
to me, that's like, I don't feel like you can defend Draymond in this situation. I, I don't see any way in the in defending Draymond. Because literally not, all the details you just listed out, I, I don't see what Jordan Poole right. was supposed to do in this situation. Because all the people, like, of course, it's the, the Twitter keyboard warriors and people are like, well, if you get in somebody's face and then they push you away, that means it's time to throw hands. And I'm like, no, it means this get out of my This bubble. is not the streets. Like This nobody, is not a, a fight outside a club. <laughs> this is an NBA <laughs> practice. These yeah. are teammates. And in the first place, like, you don't, like, you have a spatial bubble around you. When somebody enters that bubble, you're not just going to let them sit there and talk to you. Like, that's also disrespectful. So, like, you got to stand up for yourself. But you don't necessarily want to fight just because you pushed them away. It's like, back off, dude. Take a joke. I don't, I don't know. Even, I'm sure Jordan Poole probably said something like below the belt, something about the contract because there's a lot of talks about Draymond's contract being up and all this stuff. Who knows? I do think that Jordan Poole is starting to be one of those guys where he maybe be building an ego because he's had a couple good seasons now. So there might be some of that, but at the same time, Draymond, you're a veteran. You're the guy that you're like, the leader of the team. Exactly. The emotional, you're the heartbeat of the team. Steph and Clay are the better players, but he's the guy that makes them go. And I saw a lot of people bring it up that, like, Draymond is the guy that kind of has put this dynasty together and been the glue piece, but he could also be the one that is breaking it apart at the same time. Because now it's like the KD issue. Now he had the Jordan, now it's the Jordan Poole issue. He, you know, he's just had some things. And I know that's like, Part of his, you know, that's Draymond Green. But I don't know. It's it, it's also funny, like I said, because it's Michigan versus Michigan State, basically. So Listen, it there are so many different ways you could go at this. First of all, I'll say if the video wasn't out, this probably this wouldn't be as big as it is. Yeah. Steve Kerr himself said he's seen over twenty practice fights as a coach and a player. And you can believe Steve Kerr because he played and he with was Jordan. punched by Michael Jordan. So I believe it. Yes. But this is a different time. Mm -hmm. And there's only one aspect where throughout Draymond's career, when he makes plain mistakes that everybody can see, the only credit I give Draymond is that he always knows when he's wrong and he always speaks on it and will tell you he was wrong. Mm -hmm. And in the press conference he had after the, in after the incident, he said, I was completely wrong. I apologize to Jordan Poole, the organization, Steve Kerr. He said he was in a bad place throughout the day, something that has to do with like life outside of the NBA, and he brought it to practice. Mm. I understand all of these things. He's human. We make mistakes, and he owns up to it. I give Draymond for owning up to the stuff he does. Mm -hmm. I give him credit for that. But <laughs> you're in your 30s. Yeah. You are the, the you are the guy the young guys look to mm -hmm. when it comes to understanding all of these things. You just teeing off, even if Jordan Poole has some ego, because he's coming off of winning a title as a young sixth man, and he's getting better and better every game, every series. Mm -hmm. Even if he has an ego, you talk to him after practice, before practice, another day, just. Why this? Right. Why this? Mm -hmm. I I just do I just don't get it. And like I said, with Jordan Poole, you get in my face. To me, you once you get face to face with me and you start walking through my chest, I'm pushing. He pushed him away and started turning around. Right. That's what I would do. Get him off of me. Turn around. Walk off. Mm -hmm. That's what you do. And Draymond in the moment said no. Yeah. And. I don't, I don't know if he, I don't know if it was his ego. He said he was in a dark place. He had to be the bigger man, quote unquote, and just take a swing. Yeah. Well, and it, yeah, it it could have been much worse. And on a much like, I don't know, lighter note, because it it at the end of the day it doesn't matter. But like you think back to some of those like the guys that talk about the Jordan type stuff. It seemed like his times where he roughed people up was. That crazy competitive edge. There was a clear purpose, even though it was wrong at times. Right, and I'm there not. Was a I'm not like clearing Jordan of like you shouldn't punch. He, he made a lot of mistakes, but like the basis for it 
is understandable, I guess. Whereas, like, Draymond is just, like, these guys are making personal attacks. And that's don't want, what you don't want to do. Um, so, I don't know. It's crazy. He's going to be in the practice facility tomorrow. Yeah. So it, it just came out today that he's he's most likely playing Thursday. Yeah. So I I'm sure on the court, on the on the um, on the bench in the sidelines there won't be any drama or anything. Yeah. But yeah, there will be an awkward feeling in the air. Yeah. Throughout the arena, when right. they're on the court together, mm-hmm. even right. if if Jordan Poole scores and they high five or something, it's still going to be like uh, this is. Yeah. Yeah. And it goes back to like the whole KD Draymond thing. Like, you know, they ended up kind of being able to somewhat work it out, and then you saw KD leave. I think the same thing is going to happen. I was just about to say, that's a, a whole other conversation we'll get to maybe next week. Yeah. But, yeah, Draymond's contract coming up. Most people think he wants to be a Laker. This doesn't help. No. Anyway, so that's, like, the only NBA news. <laughs> Pretty dramatic, though. Yeah, very strange. All right, college football. Michigan had a, they had a little scare for a bit. Playing Indiana, first half they came out slow, and then yeah, the the Mike Hart thing won't go. That was, yeah, that yeah was won't spooky. go super like deep into that. But it was it was very scary to see uh, running backs coach Mike Hart had a seizure on the sideline. It was clear everybody was shaking. Blake Corum and Donovan Edwards, you could see them very emotional mm-hmm. after Mike Hart was taken away to the back. So that I I won't say that was a huge, but that clearly weighed on some people. Mm-hmm. But yeah, they they came out slow in the first half. Yeah. Um I think this goes back to the advantage that U of M has against these lower teams. Just pounding the rock, they can wear teams out. And I I think that's what happened to Indiana. Like they came out, you know, they kind of had the crowd going. Indiana was able to build somewhat momentum. Like their offense looked pretty solid. They came out with a really good game plan. Yeah. So, but I think by the end of the game, you know, you can just lean on Blake Corum, and it's like that guy is so hard to stop that it just wears defenses out. Yeah, but also J.J. McCarthy played a close to flawless second half, and Jim Harbaugh said in the second half, "We made the decision to just put the ball in J.J.'s hands," which I don't understand why you couldn't do that from the beginning. And I think play calling on both sides of the ball was just strange and not very good throughout this entire game. They need to clean that up, but yeah, Blake Corum, like you said, he just leans on you. Them on both sides of both lines, offensive and defensive line, they just overtook Indiana in the second half, and it was twenty-one nothing in the second half. And JJ McCarthy had his best game. Yeah. Now U of M will go on to play Penn State this weekend. That's going to be a real tester. Uh, Penn State is sitting at they're the tenth, tenth ranked team. Uh, yes. And Michigan fell down to five, <laughs> unfortunately. Clemson is better right now. Yeah. I also think Tennessee is better. So Yeah. I mean, they played more people at this point. Yeah. Uh, Michigan's more back-end heavy of their schedule. But, um, so they'll play Penn State this weekend. Going to be another tough one for them. Um, but if they win this game, they'll be sitting pretty uh, for two weeks, at least. Yeah. <laughs> I, I've, I don't know if I, I think I've said this in the last few weeks. I'm not terrified of this game. It's definitely going to be close, closer. If it's close down the end, I, I will probably be nervous. Mm-hmm. But James Franklin's record coming to Ann Arbor, outside of that weird, ridiculous COVID season, Michigan usually pops him when he when him and Penn State come to, to Ann Arbor. Yeah. So I'm not too afraid. I'm not afraid of Sean Clifford, especially if you can get pressure on him. He'll make mistakes. They do have Catron Allen and Nick Singleton, who are two – High-level freshman running backs who can make big plays. But the, our run defense has been really good throughout this season. Uh, I don't. I think Penn State has good receivers. I don't think they have the top-level guys that can just, like, break the DBs, which has kind of been a weak spot mm-hmm. of the team so far. But, yeah, I, I think I'm kind of confident about Michigan winning this one, even if, it, even, even if it's only by a touchdown or, like, 10 points. Yeah which I think it could be by more because I think they're going to keep getting better as the season goes on. J.J. McCarthy's getting more confident. He's completing 78% of his passes. Part of that is because of bad competition, but also because he's just playing really good football. I think they'll put the ball in his hands more. They don't have to just 
give Blake Corum 30 to 35 carries every game. And the pass rush is getting better with Mike Morris and A.I.B. Oki. So, yeah, I, I think Michigan wins it. Could even be a two-touchdown win. Yeah. MSU versus Ohio State. I wrote down there's nothing to discuss here. Marvin Harrison Jr., man. I, it's, it's just disgusting seeing how much talent they have. Mm-hmm. Those catches, that back shoulder catch where he reached all the way down to his feet, grabbed it, and just turned around in the ends. It, it was ridiculous. Yeah. C.J. Stroud, 21-26, six touchdowns. He did throw a pick, but. He he threw it straight to a kid. It's the easiest <laughs> defensive. Yeah. Uh, the easiest turnover they have all season. Um, Michigan State, we expected them to get their butts kicked. I think the biggest problem like that stinks right now is like in that game, Elijah Collins led the team in rushing two carries, nine yards. Now, I know Ohio State's a top team. They are now the odds-on favorite to win the national championship too, which is a little wild that beating Michigan State put them there, but – that's they're they're off, they have the best offense in the country, so. Yeah. Yeah, and Alabama and Georgia have shown some weakness in the past few weeks. Yeah, but um, I don't know. It's just going to be, like I said, at this point, I I don't think Michigan State can make it to 500, to be honest. I think it's going to be real painful um, throughout the rest of the season, and I don't know. Now, one thing I will point out, just, you know, Give MSU people something to look forward to or think about. There are still players on this team and a good majority that were brought in from the previous regime. They are still getting Tux guys in. Um, so within the next couple of years, then we'll really get to see where this team is at as far as, you know, new prospects and things like that. But it's not a good start either way. Um, so we'll just have to wait and see. I, I don't know. Who does MSU have? Do they play this week? They play Wisconsin. Okay. This is. And it's at home. This I is a, this should be a win. Yeah. Well, Although Wisconsin I, played really well against Northwestern. Yeah. Northwestern. But at I, this su- point, I assume they'd have a get back game. But at this point, them. like, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I'm telling it's, you. I, it, it's, it'll, pro- it'll probably be a weird game. Yeah. Probably. But we'll see. We'll see. Um, other notable games. Uh, there, this week's noon slate is going to be maybe the best of the season. Yeah. It's going to be awesome. Kansas goes to Oklahoma after Oklahoma got beat 49 and nothing by Texas. Quinn Ewers is back. Texas, yes, Quinn Ewers is back. Texas isn't back, but Quinn Ewers might get them back. Yeah. Because he looks to be the savior that they thought he was going to be. Mm-hmm. Kansas lost a shootout to TCU last week with Jalen Daniels out. Yeah. Jason Bean came in and still kept the offense going. Kansas has more, more, more momentum than Oklahoma. They're honestly a better team than Oklahoma right now, mm-hmm. which was not on my bingo card for this season. I would love to see Kansas get this win. And mm-hmm. get their sixth win and be bowl eligible. They have a really good chance. Alabama and Tennessee. This is the biggest game Tennessee has played in over twenty years, <laughs> and it's not even an, exa- an exaggeration, because this is the first time in a long time where they have a clear chance of beating Alabama. And it it honestly doesn't have. It has some to do with Bryce Young being uh, banged up. But even if Bryce Young played, they would still have a good chance mm-hmm. because Alabama has shown that they have areas that they need to clean up, and they're not their best self right now. And Tennessee is rolling right now. They have the the most momentum in the country, in my opinion. And if they beat Alabama, Knoxville might burn down. <laughs> they, they've they already started constructing extra goal posts <laughs> because they, are, they know the fans are going to tear them down and the people are just going to go nuts in the streets if they win this game. Yeah. And I'm wearing a Tennessee shirt right now because it can happen. Mm-hmm. And I really hope they get it done. Hendon Hooker is in the Heisman conversation, and if he wins this game, he might be behind C.J. Stroud as the number two guy. Mm-hmm. And I'd really love to see that. 
And the craziest thing is, in the beginning of November, they also have to go play at Georgia. Yeah. So this could be some, like, I'm not, I'm not going to try to jinx it, but this could be some miracle season in the making. Listen, there there's some Tennessee is backness happening right now, and it's not a real fluke. Like, this team is good. Mm-hmm. Josh Heupel is coaching his butt off, and the offense is rolling, and the team's just playing really good. So, hope they can beat Alabama. Oklahoma State plays TCU. TCU has just been on a roll. Mm-hmm. Oklahoma State has gone through several challenging games, and they're undefeated. Two five and zero teams. Sam Duggan playing his butt off. Quentin Johnston might be a first round NFL pick. He's six four over two hundred pounds, so he can do it all. One of the best receivers in the country. That's going to be a really good matchup. Mm-hmm. And then NC State going to Syracuse. Five and zero Syracuse. Yeah, it's wild. Ranked eighteenth in the country. I don't know if Devin Leary's playing, but if he doesn't. I'm taking Syracuse. I'm yeah. betting them on the money line, mm-hmm. and you should too. Yeah, go Orangemen. Six and zero Syracuse. Let's go. And uh, James Madison is ranked. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. It is the NCAA rules banning first year FBS teams from making a bowl game or winning conference games is insane. I don't know why it's still a rule. It seems like something that should have gone away years ago. They're the best team in the Sun Belt in the moment. Mm-hmm. They're ranked 25th, and they can't win the conference. <laughs> yeah, it's stupid. So insane. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Any other things that stand out to you in the rankings this week? I mean, UCLA top of the pack. Love. Oh, listen, Chip Kelly. He it's taken a few years, but he's getting UCLA to a point where they might be the best team in the Pac-12 right now. Well, we'll they're really hot. We'll find out in two weeks. Yeah. They play at Oregon, so. Yeah, them USC and Oregon are they're going for the top spot. Yeah. Utah's had some injuries; they've kind of fallen back. They're still good, but yeah, UCLA they got them last week. Um, they're playing pretty well. What was I going to bring up? Oh, I was going to bring up like Texas's schedule to end the season because they're four and two right now. After Iowa State, they play Oklahoma State, Kansas State, TCU, Kansas, and Baylor. Yeah, all teams that were ranked or at one point ranked. All teams that will probably be bowl teams. So like they could, they could make a crazy run too. Um, and then the final thing I did want. Did you, did you see any of the the Illinois Iowa? Listen, game? man, this <laughs> Kirk Ferentz and his son Brian. If I was an Iowa fan, I feel bad for Iowa fans right now because they are really just spitting in the faces of Iowa fans. Kirk Ferentz is in press conferences talking about, hey, we went, we made it to the Big Ten Championship last year. <laughs> Don't you have faith? There are pictures of there – was, there was a drive where Spencer Peters threw an interception in the fourth quarter, and the camera zoomed to him and Brian Ferentz talking to each other on the sidelines, and they're laughing and smiling at each other. Yeah. And Iowa fan – if I was an Iowa fan, I would uh, – nine to six. <laughs> yeah. This, this this should be about Illinois. Illinois is five and one, at the top of the West right now. Brett Bielema was getting them where they sh- should be, honestly, consistently. But I think the funniest thing, Illinois, they ran the ball well. They put up two hundred yeah, yards. Chase Brown is probably the most underrated running back in the country. But they threw for hundred and sixteen yards on nineteen attempts. Listen, once that's a three point nine yard average on throw. Once Tommy DeVito got hurt, the like. Hardcore college football fans know about the legend of Art Sitkowski. It's just. <laughs> he threw, I believe it was four touchdowns to like 22 interceptions as a freshman at Rutgers. Yeah. Transferred to Illinois, and he's been a decent backup ever since, but he's still Art Sitkowski. And Iowa gave Art Sitkowski a win. Game ended at 9-6. to six. It was just. Congratulations, Illinois. You're a win away. A, a classic. So <laughs> Classic Big Ten game. That, yeah, that was something else. I just thought I'd mention that. I'm happy for Illinois. Yeah, Rank, they're playing pretty good. Yeah, ranked number 24. And underrated defense. One of the better defenses in the Big Twin, honestly. They've, been, they've played really well. So good for Illinois. All right. That's our college football. Um, yeah. Is there any game that's going to be your game that you're going to tune into this weekend? I mean, it'll have to be Alabama-Tennessee. I'm with you on that. 
Anytime I can potentially see Alabama lose, I'm there for it. I knew, yeah. <laughs> so you want to see the kingdom fall? Yeah. Um, I have been enjoying TCU football. Um, they've been exciting. They they've been good. Uh, so that's another one that I I kind of like watching. Yeah. Um, so we'll see next week uh, what happens. Some big games. Well, let's get into some of this weird NFL stuff that's happened. I haven't even asked about who won picks. Well, we'll I've been slowly chopping away we'll get to the that. past three weeks. We'll get to that. Um, Monday. Let's start with the Monday night stuff because um, that's the most recent. Devontae Adams at the end of the game, disappointed that his team lost. The Raiders went uh, tried to go for two on their final touchdown to bring them within one. They could have kicked an extra point to tie the game going to overtime. I fell asleep during this last drive, so I missed I, all of it. <laughs> I don't I don't blame them for the choice because you don't want to give Patrick Mahomes overtime. Yeah. Like that's your chance to win right there. Uh kind of just messed up the two point conversion. It was close. Um so Devontae Adams was visibly upset that they lost that game. They're now one in four. That's also rough for the Raiders. Um being a playoff team last year. Um but at the end of the game, he's walking out, leaving the tunnel. Cameraman runs across the and tunnel. Bumps into him. And Devontae pushes him. It was kind of like a same, like the photographer was running into him. Yeah. And as soon as he was making contact, Devontae pushed. Yeah. Um, and it came out today, and it came out the other day, that that cameraman was suing Devontae Adams. Today, Devontae Adams is now charged with misdemeanor assault. So, there will be a case ensuing. And is it bad to say I think that's just silly? No. Him being charged for misdemeanor assault. No. Ah, uh, like I, it's so weird to me too. What? Well, where was the camera guy going? Yeah. Who? He had to have been going to get a different shot or something. Thought that this was his one chance to get across the tunnel. And then he ran into the wrong person, wrong time. Um, because I don't like. There were two angles of this shot. The first angle was more of an overhead, and it looked way worse. Um, then there was a shot that was behind Devontae Adams, cameraman following Devontae Adams. And you can clearly tell that the camera guy was, like, right in his vicinity. And, I like, when I first heard it, because I didn't see it after the game, when I first heard of it, I thought Devontae Adams, like, threw this guy to the ground. But he did, like, a, a, yeah. like a right in front of you, like, step off me kind of shove guy fell backwards because he's i mean he's holding a big camera so it makes sense i guess he got hurt it's petty but at the same time like if this was like lebron and lebron pushed me over i'd want to sue him (laughs) (laughs) you know like i don't i don't fully blame the guy like that's why i love the honesty because it's so stupid it, I I agree. Listen, like, I, 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 ninety percent of people would do this, right? But even if you did it on accident, you're running into a dude in a, a NFL player in incredible shape mm-hmm. that is much stronger than you, and he is in a horrible mental space right now. Right. And that what is, was going to happen? That is part of the job. He wasn't going to stop and go. Oh, oh my god! I, I'm so sorry. You yeah. bumped into me. I apologize. That wasn't going to happen. He was yeah. pissed. Well, I mean, ON TV, we do football games. We have a sideline camp. You have to watch out for the players. Yes. Even though the game's over, you still got to watch out. Like you just said it. These guys are prime athletes, the best of the best. And they, especially this sport. Yeah. Running into one of the best players on the losing team. We saw what Bobby Wagner did to a streaker on the field. So, yeah. that, ah. And there's uh, to me, there's also a reason this rarely ever happens. Yeah. So why what? Why did this happen now? I can't remember what game it was. Um, I've never seen a photographer just run into a football player. Besides, like I don't remember if it was the Sunday instance. night game or what. But I also remember there was an audio guy on the sideline with the big dome, and he was holding it, and a guy ran him over. That, that, that looked, happened. That happens a lot. That looked football way, players running over like camera people. Right, and, that know. looked way worse than what happened to this camera mo- guy. So, it's silly. It's dumb. But when you can sue a superstar athlete that's making millions of dollars, do I get it? Most people do it. Kind of. Most people do it. It's really low, but I, 
I get it. Like, it's stupid. So uh, it's annoying. It, it's an annoying thing. I do agree. Like some radio people have brought up like Devonta Adams in his apology, then should have just cut the guy a check for 10 grand and said, Hey, go have a good family vacation. So then you don't have to worry about like the legal stuff. Like, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I, I don't know. Uh, I don't want to say much more because then I'm just going to start going in on yeah. how it's I, just, the reasons why I can't stand people. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's a whole different argument. What we should go into is the NFL and they're roughing the passer call. There was two instances this weekend that were egregiously bad. The first was on Sunday afternoon, Tampa Bay and Atlanta. Probably, well, you never know. Possibly. Could have stopped Atlanta from winning the game. Atlanta had a chance to knock off Tampa Bay. And it was taken away because Grady Jarrett slammed Tom Brady into the ground as he's sacking him. He tackled him. He, I, he tackled him. I don't understand. And people keep forgetting about that one. Like, people were all up in arms about Monday night. I'm like, Atlanta could have won the game. Now, I understand, like, the Monday night one, it's prime time. It's more eyes on it. But at that point yeah. in the game, it didn't fully matter. I yeah. think the, with it going right into like, it was right before halftime. Yeah. And it gave like the Raiders a chance to go and score going into the half. So that would have gave them a lot of momentum. Right. So it's it's not as much as the Falcons one. But it's, right. yeah. It but it been ended big. up giving Kansas City the momentum because they got the ball back and then they hit a 59-yard field goal yeah. to end the half. So – at the end of the day, to me, the Sunday one was just as bad. But people, people. I was, I was watching the Sunday night one, so it it seemed worse to me. I I wasn't watching when the Tom Brady one happened. But it's so bad, and like again, we are talking about the best of the best athletes. Most of these linemen, linebackers, two fifty to three fifty. Four or five speed. Some of them are crazy fast, even faster than that. You can't stop that kind of momentum. That's just basic, like, math. And, like, I, I understand they've always been trying to protect the quarterback these days. But those weren't even that hard of hits. Not at all. Like, what is, was it? Chris Jones last night? Yeah. Or, or Monday night? So Chris Jones <laughs> tackles Derek Carr. He lands on him. And he, their explanation was that, like, his left arm was underneath Derek Carr or something. <laughs> I don't even know the reasoning. And that is the There problem. is no real reasoning. I, I, can, I don't know. When it happened, I, I went on Twitter, looked at people's reactions going crazy. Mm-hmm. And it just had to be. Skip Bayless was the one person screaming, all of you are wrong. By the letter of the rule, this is what's supposed to happen. Yeah. And I have a feeling that he was kind of right. Yeah. And a lot of the people that say that are right. And the fact that Roger Goodell allows this and the people that put this rule into place allow this, there's some insane stupidity and incompetence yeah if you think this was going to go over well mm -hmm. in any way or if this connected to Tua in any way I was gonna this say doesn't this is just football yeah you are throwing flags for defensive players playing a game I mean playing the sport how they're supposed to play it right just making tackles mm -hmm. yeah and it's, it's I, I don't know and I don't I, know man I get the idea like sure there's Within the written rules of the game, sure, it probably makes sense. Similar to on Monday night when Devontae Adams, to me, made a catch. I get that he didn't have two feet down or whatever. So within the written rules, it wasn't a catch at the end of the game. To me, it was a catch, but I, I get that one. But I think that's the, the biggest problem is like they have these rules written this way, and then it's so hard to judge – like in that instance, what's what? Like, I don't know. It 
I, I kind of am in the boat where a lot of people are saying they should start doing roughing the passer as a reviewable play. I hate slowing the game down, but for that kind of thing, I just take the rule back. I could maybe you know, understand it. You don't have to add reviews. Just take it back because it was never necessary. Yeah. The hardest part is, and just it's like, already ruining games. I get that they have, you know, we now have information of like what the damage to these guys does. But there's more than just the quarterback that's taking damage in these yes. games. So yes. I think that's the, the weirdest part. And I know the, the quarterback tends to be indefensible a lot of the times. So that's kind of where it's at. But at the same time, like, you can't keep giving them all this free stuff. Um, So I don't know. They need to look at it. I, I do think that the Tua stuff has played into a lot of these issues because there's still crazy things going on with the Tua thing. Uh, he's not even going to play this weekend um, where a lot of people thought he might. A lot of people think he shouldn't play the rest of the season. Yeah. but And I yeah. believe, uh, don't quote me on this, I believe the NFLPA just got rid of, they fired their the, neurologist the, guy. Yeah. And it wasn't because he made any issue. It was because he was standing up for himself of like what he knows. Well, the NFLPA didn't like that. And they fired him. Somebody had to go. Somebody was going to get fired. Well, the Miami guy was already fired for having a mistake. But then they said, okay, well, now the head honcho, we're looking at you. What was the issue? And he's like, we've been doing everything right. And by our, you know, neurological sciences or whatever, I'm not that smart. That this is what we're supposed to do. Well, they didn't like it. They got rid of him. So we'll see what happens. But there's still crazy stuff going on in the background for the NFL with all this. Um. But yeah, they got to figure out the roughing the passer stuff. That it it's bad, and people everywhere are up in arms about it. So hopefully they review it, talk to the refs about it, it change the rule next year or something. Figure something. Change out. the rule now. You don't have to wait. I don't know how that works, but yeah, it, just, it, just do it. You are going to ruin all viewers. Like ratings and viewership are going to go down. Yeah, if this continues, you can't let this go on the rest of the season. Mm. Is you can't. If they do, then good luck. <laughs> yeah. Good luck. We'll see. All right. We got just over 20 minutes left. So we can do our picks, talk about each game a little bit here and there. Last week. Tell us what what, what happened. Last week. We had yeah. a good week. I will, I'm will. i not going to lie. We had a good okay. week. Malik got 10 picks right out of Interesting. What, the 16. I got 10. So, Malik's been chipping away. But I got 12. Bravo. And I increased that lead. Congratulations. Back up just a little bit. So, some notable games. Thursday night stinker. I did have Indianapolis. Uh, Malik got New England right. Big whoop. I even <laughs> believed that New England was going to win that game. Um, you got 12 out of 16. I had, New or- I had New Orleans. You had Seattle. That was a close game. A good game. Seattle should have won. You had the Jets. Captain Geno. You had the Jets. I did not know that Teddy Bridgewater would also have a concussion, and they'd bring in Skylar Thompson, yeah. who actually did okay. Um, Houston, that was my call over Jacksonville. That game, that game was just weird. That was a bad game, too. Yeah. And my Dallas pick. I had Dallas everywhere beating the Rams, and I hate Dallas. But I just They're just playing great football. And I hate man. L.A., too, so big Micah Parsons guy. Listen. Oh, we'll, we'll wait for the Cowboys game for me to say what I want to say. And then I also had Baltimore. Justin Tucker's the greatest kicker of all time. Yes. And you had Kansas City. Las Vegas was kind of my last, you know, try something. So the standings now sit 39 to 42. So I have a little cushion again. Just a little one. Not much. Um, And our Thursday night stinker comes back again. Yes. We have the Commanders taking on... The Chicago Bears. The way Washington lost that game was so Carson Wentz. Oh, man. Oh, it was bad. It is beautiful and awful to watch at the same time. Yeah. It's um, like watching Avengers Infinity War or something. Wow, that's... <laughs> so much action. So much, so much, just, you love it, and then they just punch you in the gut. Mm-hmm. And then the yeah. Bears, I, I don't know. I don't know what they're doing. I, I don't... Who who's to blame? Is it Eberflus? I think so a little bit. Is it the is it Ryan Pace 
for having an incredible like last two off seasons and then apparently not really because he just hasn't given well, Justin Fields anything. It's weird because like this is one of those situations where you start a rebuild off with a certain regime. They take Justin Fields, a franchise turning quarterback, hopefully. And then you decide, well, that regime didn't get it done. We're going to bring in new people that are going to take on this quarterback that they just said is going to be our new quarterback for the future. Well, maybe they didn't, they don't agree with that. So now it's like you have this quarterback from a previous regime that they picked, and now you insert a new regime. They might not like the quarterback as much. So now you're in trouble. And now you're in a rebuild again. Maybe that's the case. Maybe it's not. I think at this point, they need to throw the ball. I get that they're like staying in games. They've won a couple games, just old school football run and rely on your defense to make a play or two. But if you want to see Justin Fields progress or find out if he can progress or not, you need to let him throw I the ball. I still don't know if he's good or bad. Exactly. I still have no idea. Exactly. He's got Darnell Mooney. They've hooked up for a couple big passes, but that's it. Like, what? Where's the creativity? Where is the building around his his strengths? Yeah. Where is it? Yeah. Now I don't want to spend too much time on each game, but the other thing we have to mention: Ron Rivera. What are you doing? <laughs> he just straight up threw Carson Wentz can you under give the us bus. A, can you give us a major reason for why with you lost this game? Quarterback. Wait, what? <laughs> Quarterback. So, so, Ron, uh, NFC East getting off to a good start. You guys are kind of lacking behind. What puts those other NFC East teams above your team? Quarterback. Can you elaborate? <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah, they got, elite, they got elite quarterbacks. You got Dak. I mean, he's not healthy right now. Jalen Hurts is progressing well. What? Uh, we... Everybody knows Carson Wentz may not be that guy. But as a head coach of an NFL team, you cannot do that. Like Listen, that is that's first, like save it for the locker room. First of all, I'll give you a strong five out of ten for that Ron Rivera impersonation. No, I wasn't trying strong to five. That. You should be in for Halloween. Secondly, <laughs> listen, as long as Dan Snyder is the owner, nothing will go right for that franchise. It, it will always be pain for the fans yeah as long as that he he's he's basically the sarver of the nfl mm-hmm. he's been around longer yeah is I, I i don't know i don't know washington does. they traded for carson wentz mm-hmm. what did they think would happen they thought they would find something out it's, that nobody else has found out before it's like you've your young skill talent is actually good jahan dotson started out hot Deami Brown, two touchdowns last game. Brian Robinson looks like he's going to be a running back for the future. They have Terry McLaurin. You have young pieces. Curtis Samuel is healthy. He's staying healthy. You drafted Sam Howell. Mm-hmm. People are already starting to he call sh- for Sam Howell. At this point, who? What? Why? Why? Why are we doing this? Play Sam Howell and let the young guys gel. Which is why I'm why? picking yeah. Chicago this week. This might be the unraveling of Washington. Listen. I agree with you. I'm also going to take Chicago. If Sam Howell gets in, they might have a chance because that kid has some electricity and he has chemistry with De'Ami Brown. They played together at North Carolina. Yeah. Put him in. End this. I, I, nobody knows why you did it, but end it already. <laughs> All right. Please. I will mention we don't have to worry about the Lions this week. They are on bye. Thank goodness. They got blown out by the New England Patriots. We don't have to worry. It was bad. It was awful. Lions season is over. We'll get into it next week. San Francisco at Atlanta. I hate to say it. Atlanta is a fun team, man. (sighs) They are a fun, feisty team. They're like a weird, frustrating team, though, at the same time. They are. They are the only team in the NFL, I believe, I remember if if I remember this correctly, that has covered the spread every week. Arthur Smith is getting the best out of these dudes. And that's with Kyle Pitts being offensive lineman. And Der- even Drake London, they didn't even pass it to him last week. They had He had like three catches last week. And they just stay in games against Tampa Bay. Who, lo- who looks like they're not the same Tampa like, Bay. I don't, yeah. I don't understand how this Atlanta team does it. 
but they like stay in games and they have chances in a lot of games. And they're just awful to watch. Like, in my brain, I say, and it stinks because I like Marcus Mariota. But in my brain, I'm saying, get Desmond Ritter out there and let's see what he can do. Falcons fans have probably been saying that since before week one. But And I, I we both love the fact that Mariota's getting another chance, but yeah. But they're in games, so like their weird style of play is Marcus working. Marcus isn't getting you over the hump. No. <laughs> He's not getting you over the it's hump. It's so weird. And then there's San Francisco, who I think is hitting their stride right now. They they did to Carolina what a really good team is supposed to do last week. Yeah. It looked like they barely sweat. Mm-hmm. They just played a just a normal game plan yeah. and ran them off the field. Yep. And that's why I'm taking the 49ers. Yeah. They're they're running like a well-oiled machine, right? They're working like they did last year. The past few years with Jimmy, you know what to expect from them. Mm-hmm. Nothing incredible, but nothing bad either. Yep. Just playing out good on both sides of the ball. They need to get healthy because Bo- isn't uh, Nick Bosa, isn't he, he having injuries again, I think? I don't actually know. Yeah, I might have to check the injury. Report. I know Joey Bosa's hurt. But they're they're healthy enough. And as long as they're healthy enough, they're going to win games because they're very well coached. Yeah, and they yeah they just they're just a good football team. New England at Cleveland. You didn't even say. Did you say you were picking forty nine? Yes. Okay, I yeah. didn't even hear you say it. I mean, maybe I didn't, but it, in my head, I said it. <laughs> Doesn't matter. We're going for San Francisco. New England at Cleveland. Another running game. This is going to be a really interesting game. Can I pick first? Go for it, because I already have mine picked out. I feel like Jacoby Brissett. Brissett plays like three and a half quarters of like quality football every week. Mm-hmm. You don't know which quarters they are. And then there's half a quarter where it's just like, ah. There he is. That, <laughs> there he that's is. Why he's, that's why he can never be a really good starter. But those three and a half, he's efficient. Mm-hmm. He's getting it to um, their top receiver. <laughs> Amari Cooper. I do this every week, Amari Cooper. <laughs> and Nick Chubb, he's the best running back in the league. Yeah. Right now, I mean, he's it, it's hard to describe he's, how, he's great, had over how great he is. 110 yards in every game, he, he's he's ridiculous. We're both Bailey Zappi fans, we're both in the fan club. Ramondre Stevenson is a really good young back. I like what they're doing, but I'm going with Cleveland. I have I have the ultimate trust in Nick Chubb. I'm going to assume <laughs> one of Jacoby Brissett's half quarters will be like the, in the first half, and in the second half he'll just play really good. And, I'm, yeah, I'm just going to go with Cleveland in this one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, I'll go with New England then. Um, I originally also had Cleveland, but I think this is a game that I, I, can, I can take the risk. I can take the risk on this one. New England coming off a good win, I guess. I don't know. Ramondre Stevenson looked good. He might get the bulk of the carries this week. I don't know what Damian Harris's status is like, um, but he got injured last week, and Ramondre looked real good. Um, we should probably mention Jack Jones. He's coming on as one of the best, not one of the best DBs in all of football, but definitely as a rookie. He's been just as good as Sauce Gardner, and not, not many people saw him coming. Their tandem I'm trying to think corners of have they, been awesome. I'm trying to think of who they've played. Um, they haven't played a bunch of juggernauts. Yeah. But him be, like Sauce has already shut down some big names. Him, but, Jack Jones being like a fourth or fifth round pick. Right, yes. And just stepping in. and The value. Yeah. yeah. He's He's been awesome for yeah. where he got drafted. Yeah, New England's kind of figured out their defense. They've, they've got it going again. Uh, they got Matthew Judon running. I was just about to good. say he's been elite. Mm-hmm. Matthew Judon has been great. The New York Jets. Who New York Jets put up forty points last week How about at the Green Jets? Bay? Both New York teams are have winning records, and Green Bay just lost to the Giants in London, and they played well. I want you to pick first. <sighs> I can't pick the Jets. <laughs> I can't pick the Jets. I have to pick Green Bay. I think this is an Aaron Jones game. Aaron Jones was saying like he wished he would have gotten some more end zone touches or red zone touches. Uh, in the previous week, so that's what I'm banking on. He, you can't lose to both New York teams in back-to-back weeks, can you? I was really hoping you'd take uh, the Jets. I, I'm not taking them either. I'm not crazy. I think the Packers' defense gets up for this one. 
I think they get some pressure on Zach Wilson, probably force a few turnovers. Sauce Gardner and that young Jet secondary versus the young Packers receiving core is going to be an interesting watch. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I'm taking the Packers. Yeah, you just you just got to trust Aaron Rodgers over Zach Wilson in yeah. this one. Sorry, Jets, you got a good win. Uh, you've had some. You're three some, and two. You've had some wins. Yeah, I just don't believe it. Jacksonville at Indianapolis. What is this game? Well, Jacksonville has beaten Indianapolis what the past four times in a row now, but they just lost to Houston. I'm I'm not even gonna think about it. I'm taking Jacksonville. Okay. This this Jacksonville team seems like a, every other week we're back on track. Or two weeks in a row and then one or two weeks off. I'm just gonna assume I don't trust the Colts at all. Okay. And I think the growth of Jacksonville just continues in this game. And this will kind of be like the Chargers game. I'll go with the Colts. This is a good uh fifty fifty game. Jonathan Taylor hopefully is back. I don't know. I don't They're really line though. Yeah, but um, I mean, Jacksonville put up six points against Houston last week. Like, I I I give that to all to inexperience. Indianapolis has most mostly experience. Yeah, and they just can't figure things out so far. They beat Russ though last week. What does that say? What does that really say? Minnesota at Miami. <laughs> Man, I feel bad for Miami. They had yeah. a good start this season, um, but. How their many defense, weeks in a row can you trust Kirk Cousins? I mean, their defense is still good. And, yeah, it it's about due for Kirk Cousins' laps. He started the game off last week 16 for 16, and it was crazy. But they almost lost the game to the Bears in the second half. That's tough. Um, I'm going Minnesota. I can't I can't go out on the limb with my end. Yeah, I can't really talk myself into Skylar Thompson. I like Skylar Thompson, but uh, the Minnesota's just – they're 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 good right now. Tyreek Hill is also a little team. banged up, and the other quarterbacks besides Tua haven't really found that connection with Jalen Waddle. So yeah. I don't believe it yet. Since he at New Orleans, whew, I'm gonna take New Orleans. I'm just going there right away. But Taysom Hill, <sighs> the game of his life. <laughs> he hurt me in fantasy because I had Alvin Kamara. So seeing him get all those rushing touchdowns hurt. But anyway. I that digress. was randomly one of the most entertaining games of the season. Yeah. Geno versus Taysom. Mm-hmm. And Andy Dalton has played good football so far. Camaro almost had 100 yards rushing and 100 yards receiving, which would have been insane. I just have a bad feeling that since, he, since he's going backwards, people got so hyped up, and now teams are starting to do that too high coverage that they did against Mahomes and Tyreek Hill with Jamar Chase. Cincinnati hasn't adjusted yet. New Orleans defense is good. They they shut down top receivers. T. Higgins has had a little ankle thing. It looks like he's going to play. I I don't know. Every time I seem to pick New Orleans, they win or they lose. And if I don't, they win. They're they're being that team for me this year. It seems like so. There's a chance Cincinnati wins, but I just have a feeling they might fall apart and people start really wondering what's going on with the Bengals. I think after seeing what Seattle did to them did to their defense last week with Geno Smith and Kenneth Walker. I'm just going to assume for at least one week, Cincinnati comes with a great game plan and puts up some yardage and some touchdowns on New Orleans. And I don't think Andy Dalton and Taysom Hill just run off another high quality, weird combo game. Yeah. And I'm going to go Cincinnati. The other thing I will say, the the surprise to me, like I love – the Ravens, I did not expect their defense to be able to shut down the Bengals. So if you're New Orleans, I would go watch that game tape. Speaking of the Ravens, they're playing the Giants. What do you The Giants you are even... four and one. Yeah. Does is Brian Dayball coach of the year so far? Yeah. Okay. I think easily. Um they've just found ways to win. I don't think they're crazy good, but they're solid. Um, I can't take them though. I can't. It's the Ravens. I I can't. Give me the Giants. Okay. Give me the G men. <laughs> I would actually be okay if they won. How it's, crazy would it be if Daniel Jones outrushed Lamar Jackson in this game? 
There's a chance. Lamar. What, has- what if New York gets some pressure on Lamar? He tries to just like put up passing. He tries to out throw him. Mm-hmm. They call some turnovers. Daniel Jones does what he's been doing so far this season. Efficient, efficient short to intermediate passing and running every time he gets an open lane. And Saquon has been pretty consistent so far. Yeah, he's been real good for them. I'm just going to go with the joy ride continuing. Fair enough. Fair enough. Five and one Giants. That'd be crazy. Tampa Bay at Pittsburgh. Carolina at the Rams. <laughs> <laughs> Kenny Pickett got set up to just get taken out last week. Yeah. I feel bad for him and George Pickens and every other young player that has to deal with that organization right now. Mm-hmm. Because they are trying to keep the same mentality they had in the 2000s when everything was just rolling and they didn't have any problems. They just, they're trying to keep the same. Yeah. And you don't have the same. Like, TJ yeah. Watt is your savior. Yeah. And Kenny Pickett had to go him. up against his first two career starts are going to be Josh Allen and the Bills, Tom Brady and the Bucks. Yeah. Good luck. Especially when Deontay Johnson's making those drops like he is. It's unfortunate. What happened to Chase Claypool? Is he in the NFL still? Yes. He's, where, where I mean, is he, he got like nine targets last week, but. I have I mean, more they, faith they in George Pickens it, right now. They also threw it like 52 times. Yeah, I mean, George Pickens is kind of the, the next best guy. Um, yeah. No, he, fill, he fills the Claypool spot. Can't take the Steelers. Can't take them. Carolina at the Rams. Matt Rule is gone. Matt Rule is gone. So is Baker Mayfield. No, he's not gone, but he's hurt, and he's not going to play. P.J. Walker will be the starter for this game because Sam Darnold is still not healthy, which I didn't realize. So, P.J. Walker versus a Rams team with no juice right now. And a terrible offensive line. Would you dare take the Panthers? I've definitely thought about it. Now, the Rams bet, offense has been now betting, very vanilla. The betting in this, I don't know what the spread is on, like, BetMGM or anything, but I know on, like, my fantasy, uh, we have, like, a little pick'ems thing. The spread for this game, Carolina plus 10.5. I would take that all day. But as an outright winner? I'm going Rams. I, Yeah. I, I think this could be a game kind of like the Falcons game where they get out at a large lead and Carolina might, might start slipping in later. Mm-hmm. But I think the Rams, at least for a bit of the game, have a commanding lead. Yeah. This is the, It could end something like, like 28-14. But, yeah, I'll go Rams. I think the real interesting thing is if P.J. Walker makes this team look better on offense. <laughs> Ooh, we got some That'd stuff. Be, yeah. Run the read option with him and Christian McCaffrey. Let's get crazy. Run some option. D.J. Man. Moore is on the trade market also heard. Yeah, a lot of A lot rumored. of good teams trying to go, go for D.J. Moore. I don't know. I don't know. It's been rumored, but we'll see. Listen, if you can get a lot of picks back and a few good players, Just don't send I consider him to, it. Don't send him to Chicago. He's too good for that. <laughs> Here we go. Another week of a battle of the birds. Battle of the birds. Cardinals at the Seahawks. Geno Smith greater than Russ Wilson. Listen, forget Cliff Kingsbury. Forget Kyler Murray. (laughs) Forget all of this ridiculous. Forget the lime green Hillary Clinton suit that (laughs) Kyler Murray wore. No, you can't forget that. that. That's ingrained in my memory. This is all a clown show in Arizona. Even if they have two wins, it's nonsense. Geno Smith, he didn't give up on his career. People were he he didn't give up. People were feeling so bad for Tyler Lockett and DK Metcalf coming into the season. Geno kept chopping. He kept getting better. His IQ was high. He's making throws. Mm-hmm. He's making some real throws. And I think the important thing is he's using his legs a bit. Listen, this is when he came out of West Virginia. This is what people thought he could be in the NFL. It took a while. He wasn't ready. But, boy, he's showing out right now. Mm-hmm. Let me. I'm, I'm, I need to just click on this game real quick to see his season. Stood. Nine touchdowns, two picks, 1,305 yards, fourth highest QBR in the league, 74.8. Yep. And 75.2 completion percentage. Seahawks by 50. Wow, okay, well. Not really by 50, but in my mind, <laughs> I hope they win by 50. I'm going to go Arizona just because. The young, fun Seahawks. It's a chance. I want the Seahawks to win at this point, but 
I think that's just... I'm going to go on this whole tirade and they're going to lose. <laughs> that's fair. All right, now we got some some good afternoon and Sunday night games. Buffalo at Kansas City. This is this is the one. The playoff rematch. Yeah. The one we've all been waiting for and it's a 4 p.m. game. Every average to bad team, the Bills just treat them like little like peewee football teams. Mm-hmm. It's fun and sad to watch. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Gabe Davis just went nuts yep. last week. Who are you taking, Joey? I have to take Buffalo. I like Buffalo. They're just more my favorite team. Travis Kelsey had four receiving touchdowns. Their offense is starting to really get rolling. Yeah. Their defense has its moments. They're getting better. But Buffalo is just so good right now. Mm-hmm. I feel like man, Kansas City, the other thing that's weird, they do not run the ball from five yards in. Never. I've never seen it. Or they do that little toss play. Yep, they do the push yeah. pass. That's all That's all they do. I'm like, everybody should just drop into coverage. When I've, seen, I've seen several NFL teams copy that push play now, which is mm-hmm. hilarious. I feel like I'd kind of be like Nick Wright if I chose the Chiefs just by going by my son, Pat Mahomes. <laughs> Oh man, oh man. Should I go opposite? Just for the this show and the memes. A, this would probably be a good game for it. It's a it's a toss up. Buffalo's great. They Chiefs lost to Miami great, though. though. Yeah, they did. So they played it close with Baltimore. But Kansas City lost to the Colts. They did. <laughs> the NFL is just weird this year. Yeah. Give me give me Pat Mahomes, man. Give me All Pat. Right. That'll be a fun one. I love what they've done with Clyde Edwards Hilaire the season. Jarek McKinnon got going mm-hmm. in that Monday night game. That was interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Travis Kelsey, he's just a monster. Close to unstoppable, especially in the red zone. Yeah. Give me KC. Sunday night is actually going to be pretty exciting. Dallas at Philadelphia. This is this should be an awesome game. This really should. That Cowboys defense versus that Eagles offense. Mm-hmm. And it's it's interesting on the other side too, that Cowboys offense. Against that Eagles defense. Yep. I I agree. Um, I've been taking Dallas a lot in these upsets. But I'm a Jalen Hurts guy. And I just, like, I can't. Like, in the other game, like, against the Rams, I could see Matthew Stafford making a mistake, getting sacked, that kind of stuff against that defense. The Eagles... I just feel like having a mo- mobile quarterback helps so much to be able to get away from like Mark Micah Parsons and that pressure. Yeah. And they run the ball so much, and they have such a good balanced attack. I don't think the defense can keep up with it. Micah Parsons being a spy on Jalen, that's going to be so interesting to see. Yeah, just seeing him chase him. I'm just going to assume. Listen, the the Cowboys keep proving me wrong, but can this Cooper Rush bubble just keep? Going? Something has to break. Philadelphia is undefeated. Cooper Rush is undefeated in his NFL starts. Something will burn. Uh, the Cooper Rush bubble is going to start to deflate. It won't pop totally, mm-hmm. but it's going to start to deflate. Fly, Eagles, fly. Philly's defense. All the way to victory. Philly's defense is also really good. Good. Yeah. <sighs> Monday night. I can't defend him anymore, Joey. Can we get Russell Wilson off of primetime football? I can't, I can't defend him anymore. It is it four, four weeks out of the six. There's only been six weeks. And Denver has been in primetime football four weeks, Malik. Listen, him and his Subway sandwich <laughs> with the danger Russ and just letting him talk with no music for a minute straight and the, ooh, spicy, and the... Uh, <laughs> See what I'm telling about? I was telling you earlier. When he was really good, his, I could I could deal with this. His cornball is coming this. out more and more. It, it seems like his teammates can't stand him. I, he, uh, did you see, what is it, they call it good morning football? I forget. The one oh, with the, Nate Burleson. The, where the whole guy the, tried the host to do, yeah. called him out. Called Russell Wilson a poser. Holy moly. Listen, that, that I was... he looks like one. He looks like a major poser right now. And I can't defend him mm. or Mr. Hackett. I can't defend Mr. Hackett. Yeah. I feel bad for those young receivers. Although Jerry Judy is still having drops problems. 
KJ Hamler was wide open. Mm-hmm. I got a ride for him. He's from Pontiac. <laughs> the one thing that and I that will, Broncos defense is really good. I will defend a little bit. They did show a replay of that final play. It's hard to know because we don't have an angle of his eyes, but it did look like Russ looked at KJ Hamler at the end, albeit late. If he would have hit him right away, would have been easy. But it looked like he saw him late, tried to fire it, and as he's doing that, that's right when Cortland Sutton was coming across. And Cortland Sutton thought it was to him. Don't know if that's true or not, but I do see the point of that in the video. The funniest part, though, that I also saw, a lot of people were saying, or no, it was specifically, I believe, Matthew Barry of NBC had said, watch them come out with a statement that Russ wasn't feeling well. A couple days happened. later, yeah. they said he had shoulder soreness or whatever. Ugh. If I was Adam Schefter, I wouldn't even have released that. No. It's it's bad. Denver fans were booing. When out when overtime started. Oh, they left the Denver stadium. Denver fans were leaving. And I can't blame them. I can't blame them. And we had an inverse. Even, even though there were a lot of fans that still stayed. Mm-hmm. There were a lot of fans that still stayed, but my God. yeah. We've had an inverse of, you know, Russ was not given the chance to win the game week one. Now he's been given a couple chances. They've gone for it. He looks cooked. Oh, boy. It's bad. Give he me looks the more cooked than his Subway sandwich. Give me the Chargers. Austin Eckler is getting going. Javante Williams is out for the season. Melvin Gordon was decent, but he's had fumble issues. Their only hope is the, the Broncos defense. Mm-hmm. And the Chargers have won two straight. They're dealing with stuff, but, yeah, Chargers. Chargers, man. This... This, yeah, this Hackett and Russ combination, man. Yeah. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. How about them Super Bowl chances now? All right, that's our <laughs> week six picks. Some pretty craziness in the NFL. Next week, like we said, um, going to do like a full NBA preview show. So we'll do mostly NBA preview. Probably just touch on Michigan, Penn State. Tell you if Michigan State won or not. Doesn't really matter. And then, of course, we'll do our week seven picks to get the picks in. Hopefully, we'll have a special guest. It's also, episode 199. Wow. We wanted the special guest for 200. Doesn't look like it's going to happen. 199 will be our special one. It is what it is. This has been Views from the Sidelines. We'll see you guys next week. Lions confidence meter right now after the Patriots. Starts. Season's over. Can you go below zero? You want to do a mock draft in two weeks? <laughs> Yeah, sure.